Hi and welcome back. I hope you're all keeping well. Um, today I'm going to show you how to paint this nice light misty summer morning scene. I'm going to try and show you some of my colour mixing here today um, and it's going to be about mixing some nice fresh greens. I've got my Saunders Waterford uh, cold press paper and I'm wetting it fairly thoroughly with the Harkey brush down as far as the horizon. It doesn't matter if you pick up a little bit of paint from your drawing board, painting board, a little bit of water across the bottom for the um, foreground, but I'm not putting too much uh, water in that. Now, this will show you the sort of consistency of raw sienna, and also if you watched that, you'll see that I'm mixing moving the brush from side to side so that I'm keeping the brush in shape and evenly distributing the paint on the brush. Now with Prussian blue it's very strong you have to mix lots and lots of water with it like I'm doing here and when you do it'll give you a lovely colour. I'm just going to sweep the pale mixture of Prussian blue across the horizontally across the top, bringing it down a little bit, making sure that I keep some of that raw sienna there for a bit of variation in the sky. And it's as simple as that. Now we'll mix up, if we can, a nice uh, fresh summery sp uh, late spring green with um, very pale, again, a Prussian blue and quite a bit of raw sienna and we'll, we'll mix that up until we get a nice fresh green. Um, don't worry about having it too evenly mixed on the brush. If we've got a little bit of colour variation on the brush, it will help um, when we put in our very simple sweep of mid and foreground, like that. We've got some, getting some dry brush stroke, uh, maybe sort of a um, bit of hit and miss on the paper, so we get a nice, uneven texture so it sort of looks like um, hills and, and, and ground. Now it's all a bit dry now on the paper so I'm just dipping the tips, just the tips of the Harky brush into the water and you can see now it's softened up across the base which makes for a nice counterpoint to the dry brush work. Now I like that, I think that looks really nice, it should dry nicely. Let's just use a clean damp brush just to clean up along the bottom so that we don't get any run backs running back into, uh, from, the, from the very wet paint. And with more of the same colour, um, while the paper's still damp in the sky, I'm just going to put in the suggestions of um, a couple of lines of distant trees. Um, I'll put most of them here on the left, but I'll put a few slightly further back um, on the right side as well, just to balance up the composition a bit, make them a bit smaller so they look like they're further in the distance. Just using the more or less the corner of the Harky brush there, which gives us that kind of shape, and we're hitting and missing, if you know what I mean, so it's not blocking in um, the entire canopy area and then chisel edge clean damp brush and you can just clean up the bottom the base of the trees if you need to and let's just zoom in and you can see there's a hair just there but that doesn't matter if you do get hairs on your picture leave it alone you can usually remove them at the end and if you try removing them when the paint's wet you can do a lot of damage to the painting and now just, if you need to, a little bit of tissue maybe just to wipe across the bottom just to increase that soft misty look. And while it's still wet, just before I let it all dry, I'm just going to go in with the card and create some um, indications of tree trunks in those lines of trees, just with the corner of the card. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You could do all your trunks a bit later with the rigger. But I think it kind of works quite well for this sort of very loose, misty look. Just a few in that side. Now I'm going to let it dry. 
it's now completely dry it's dried back a bit lighter but it still looks lovely I think if you look across the painting across here it's nice and misty there's quite a nice subtle variation in tones across the ground um, and I think we'll put some more tree canopies in now and maybe put a fence um, across the foreground so with my rigger I'm mixing a bit of Prussian blue not too much but a bit of Prussian blue in with some burnt umber to get a sort of brown but not too rusty I want it slight, slightly sort of greenish tinge to it I think you can see the thickness is a bit like thick ink so I'm trying it out there and yes it's looking looking good so I'm now just going to spend a little while I won't film all of it but spend a little while just pulling up with the rigger um, through that tree area that we've painted um, tree trunks and branches trying to keep it nice and thin and remembering to taper the branch sorry the brush off as you get closer to the top where the branches obviously are thinner Now I've mixed up some of the same sort of green um, and I'm going to just use the the corner of the large harky brush um, and the tips just to get in the shape of um, the canopies of these trees now um, so that we've got them a slightly higher taller row than the first ones that the trees that we put in. Just added a little bit of um, burnt sienna and a little bit of um, raw, uh, sorry, burnt umber to the mix just to darken it a little bit. Just like this, so that I can now pop that into the trees and um, it makes them look a bit more three dimensional and gives them just a little bit of shadow and depth. Just put a, a little bit of the same colour um, just across the base of the of the trunks so that we get a bit of shadow in there as well. I don't want too much too many darks in this. I want to keep this really light and misty and bright and fresh and sort of summery and cheerful. And then just a bit more of the same green, uh, just to indicate the canopies of the trees on this side. Now I'm just going to mix up the same sort of mixture as I used for the tree trunks, that's Prussian blue and raw umber, sorry burnt umber, and just going to put in some fence posts now across the foreground. I'm going to keep them nice and thin if I can. Put them in on this side first and I'm going to leave a gap um, just for the sake of it and then just carry on putting the fence posts um, across going down towards the left hand corner. I tend to like the look of joining them up in a sort of continual way, it's fairly randomly. I'm just sweeping the brush through across like that, but you can join individual posts together with shorter strokes if you prefer. Just going to put the rest in, um, as, as I said, coming down towards the left hand corner, maybe make them slightly larger as we come down so it looks like they're coming towards us a bit. And again, join them up in however you want with as many planks or wires as you like. just going to dab the base for some of the posts a little bit just to lighten them up so that they look as if they are more in the sort of early morning mist. And with the same mixture 
just a few little birds in the sky if you like you can leave them out if you don't want birds here but I just think that they work quite well here they link the land and the sky quite nicely now just a, um, one more tiny one there I think and then some more of the same sort of mixture but this time on the tips of the Haki brush and just going to dab in a tiny bit of darker shadow under the fence in places just so that it sort of grounds it a little bit so it's not looking like it's sort of floating in the foreground right I think we're just about there just going to um, use the same sort of green mixture um, to drag across some dry brush just to give us a little bit more texture um, across the foreground I don't want detail um, just to draw it all together and here's the finished painting I hope you like it um, I think it's simple but effective and of course you could do this with any colors that you wanted um, because it's a method rather than a picture to kind of try and duplicate. Um, but I hope you enjoy painting it and I'd love to see your results. Anyway, you take care now and I'll see you soon. Bye.